All right, today's uh, exercise, <clears throat> we're going to be talking about uh, this particular drawing here, uh, which includes something uh, different. It basically includes threads. All right, so we haven't played around with threads at all yet. Okay, um, we can see uh, in this drawing... that this is a half inch 20 ANSI thread. All right, so that we have to keep in mind. We can see that there's a dotted line around uh, that particular hole, which also designates the fact that it is a threaded hole. Uh, and we see in the other views, the front view and the side view, uh, that it is a tapped hole or a threaded hole. Okay, it doesn't go all the way through. Um, but we'll show you how to create uh, those threaded holes, all right, using something called the hole wizard, all right? So, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to start a sketch uh, probably on the top. Uh, top plane. All right, so I'm going to left click, enter sketch, and get into sketch mode. Okay, ah, I caught myself this time. I'm going to go right into IPS and then go into the top plane sketch mode. Okay, so right off the bat, um, <clears throat> I'm going to use the uh, center rectangle uh, tool. All right, and I'm going to start right at the origin. And I'm going to left click, drag out, and left click to set it. Okay, now our dimensions here, use my smart dimension tool. Um, on the bottom, <clears throat> this is going to be 6.5 or 6.5. Okay. So I'm going to type 6.500. Now, before I let this go, um, I just want to mention that there's a couple of icons here. And we can kind of rebuild current values. We can, you know, restore other values. We can confirm the current value that we have. This last icon that is on over here um, is mark dimension to be or imported into a drawing. All right, so in reality, we can turn this off and we can turn this on to specify if we actually want this dimension to be imported and possibly used later on in our drawing annotations, okay? So if it's a major dimension that we think we're going to be using to, uh, uh, to define our part, uh, then we can keep this turned on. If it's an extra dimension just to help us build the current sketch, then we might want to consider turning this off so that we don't import it and then our final drawing will be pretty clean. Okay, so I'm going to green check this. I've got my six and a half. Uh, I'm going to go on the other side, pull out a dimension of five inches. Okay. You'll also notice that I typed in the value of 5.000, okay? I went to three decimal places, yet both of my dimensions here are only two decimal places, okay? If you haven't been able to figure this out yet, your sketching dimension tolerances or precision um, is over here in the left-hand side, okay? So with this being selected, I'm going to change the document precision to three decimal places. I'm going to left click on my six and a half dimension and also make that three decimal places. All right, so that way you can control the precision and tolerances of your part as you're modeling. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I've got, I do have a hole in here. All right, there is a large hole. Uh, and this is one of those cases where I don't mind 
including another sketch, all right, um, because it is just one single element. So from the origin, I'm going to draw a hole, smart dimension it, right? And this is my island. Okay, this diameter will be 1.500, right? So this one sketch is an island inside of a larger sketch, which means what? It's going to recognize this as a whole automatically, okay? If there were any other circles in here, I'd have too many islands, and it wouldn't know what to do, okay? We want to avoid those kinds of sketches because then it gets really complicated, and half the time you guys don't know what you're doing, and SolidWorks doesn't know what it's going to do, okay? So one island within a boundary, that's as far as you go in terms of advanced sketching, okay? Um, that I would appreciate. So, uh, this uh, dimension is highlighted. I'm going to change its precision to three decimal. And we seem to be good here. Okay, so I'm going to exit my sketch. My sketch is highlighted. If it's not highlighted, left click once on sketch two so that it's blue. And I'm going to use my extruded boss base. And we're going to make sure that this is extruded 0.375. Okay. Once I've got my extrusion, I'm going to green check and confirm. And everything looks good. Okay. Secondly, I want to build on top of this surface. Okay, so I'm going to left click on this face and I get my little heads up display. Okay, I want to go and create a new sketch. So I'm going to go to my sketch or new sketch icon. Okay, and I see editing sketch number three. I'm under define, so I'm in sketch mode. Okay, I might want to orbit just a little bit. And I'm going to start with the corner rectangle tool. So I have to change the little drop down arrow, switch over to the corner rectangle tool. And I'm going to start from the corner point, left click, drag out a box. Okay, now I can do this two ways because there is some symmetry here. Okay, so I can either draw another one on this corner, on the right-hand corner, or I can draw my left side and use a mirroring technique to then get the same thing on the right side. All right, since we haven't really used any kind of mirroring features yet, we're going to try using that. Okay, so let me get this constrained. Um, I'm going to turn to my smart dimension. And I'm going to say that this top line will be 2.000. The left line, same thing, 2.000. And in this case, I will actually do a fillet within the sketch. So I'm going to go to my fillet tool. And I'm going to change my fillet parameters uh, and say that it's a radius of one inch. So 1.000. And my entities to fill it is a highlighted blue box. Okay, so it's looking for entities to fill it. I'm going to left click or hover over this point. Okay, hover over the point and it shows me a little preview. I'm going to left click and then confirm. Green check. Okay. So, and I'm going to get out of the sketch fillet tool by green checking again. Okay. So now we see our fillet. We see all of this. Um, next is I have to have some sort of mid plane or center plane. Okay. If I look over here in the upper left corner of my workspace, 
if I go down to the drop down box, um, the front plane will not work. Top plane, we're on the top plane. The right plane, if I just click on that and hover, we could use the right plane because it is symmetrical on a, uh, about that right plane. Okay, that's one option. Another option is to draw a center line from the center and use the center line as the midpoint uh, central axis. Okay, so I can do that as well. I'm going to go to my line tool, hit the little drop down, go to center line, and from the origin, right. I want to make sure that I look for that little yellow icon next to my pencil to tell me that I'm vertical. Okay. Draw my center line and hit escape. Okay. This way I have some sort of uh, central location. Next, I'm going to say mirror entities. Okay. This is sketch. All right. I can do the same exact thing in features. So if this was extruded as a boss, Right, if it's stuck out from my part, I could actually mirror that that feature. Okay, but we're gonna do it in the sketch. So mirror entities. What entities do we want to mirror? That's my blue box right now. So it's looking for answers. So I'm gonna left click on each of these lines. One, two, three, on the fillet, four, and five. Okay, so we want to copy. That's checked on by default. Mirror about. What are we mirroring about? Are we mirroring about a plane, or are we mirroring uh, mirroring about a center line? All right. Well, we have a center line here, so I'm going to left click that, and I see all of my sketch entities on the other side. So I'm going to confirm my mirror command. Okay. Now that I'm done with my sketch, I'm going to exit the sketch. And I need to turn this into a boss. So I'm going to use the boss extrude uh, feature tool. Okay, there we go. And this is going to be extruded about two and a half. So two point. Let me make sure I click into my properties here. 2.500 and green check. Okay, so this is what we have so far. All right. Now the key is going to be to get those threaded holes. Okay. Uh, using th or using the hole wizard is very helpful. Um the hole wizard is basically a combination of sketching and features all in one command. Okay. So it is under the feature tab. We've got the hole wizard here. All right. We do have some other drop downs uh, for hole wizard, advanced holes and threads. Um, we're going to use the hole wizard. Okay. So click on hole wizard. And this is the hole wizard here on the left hand side. The hole wizard has two tabs. It has a type tab and it has a positions tab. Okay, so the positions tab obviously controls where your hole is going to be positioned. Okay, the type tab controls what type of hole it's going to be. So under the hole type, we have, um, we have counter bores, we have counter sinks, we have legacy holes or just traditional holes, straight tapped holes, all right? These are gonna be your threaded holes right here. Then we start getting into fancy uh, types. So a taper tap, a legacy hole, uh, a counterboard slot, a counter sunk slot, and then just a straight slot hole, all right? So a little bit more advanced. So. First thing is, I'm going to come here and this is telling me that we have a half inch 20 ANSI thread. Okay, so I have to look uh, over here and the standard that I'm going to be using is ANSI inch threads. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that that's selected. 
I'm going to click on the hole type being a straight tap hole. Okay. Then I'm going to go to the hole specifications. All right. And these are all of the standards, right? All of the standard thread types or thread holes that are used in industry. Okay. There's nothing special. These are all the standard tapped holes. So I'm going to look for a half inch 20. Okay, here it is, a half inch 20 standard tap. All right, so I select half inch 20. Um, the end condition is not going through all. All right, so I'm going to change this to blind. Blind basically means that it only goes as far as I want it to go. All right, so the default for the blind condition is 1.15 inches. All right, and I think that's probably what it is because we have a two and a half inch, um, you know, distance on my boss. All right, so the final thing I have to do is to get the right position of these holes. All right, so for that, I have to go up to the positions tab and I get a yellow warning box saying what? Select the face for the hole or slot position. Okay, to create holes on multiple faces, click 3D sketch. We don't want to click 3D sketch, okay? I basically want to say that this is the face or this is the plane that I'm creating my hole. So I'm going to left click this face. Once I do that, it highlights that face, okay? And I see a preview of my threaded hole or what my hole is going to look like, okay? This is a half inch 20 size hole. So I can just left click to place it uh, and then use my smart dimensions to put it in the right spot. But because I have this arc here, that arc, if I hover over it, is going to give me a center mark. So I'm going to hover over that line. Okay. Hovering over the midpoint of that line. And I see my center hole target. So I'm going to go to that target. Left click. And I place my hole. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Hover over that curved edge, the rounded edge, maybe find the midpoint and my target lights up. So I go to my center mark target, left click to place. Okay. I've just positioned my holes and I'm going to, I don't really need to go back into the type, <clears throat> uh, but I'm going to green check to confirm this. I can green check over here or I can green check over here. Either way is fine. I click OK. And we should have threaded holes. Now, you may or may not, depending on your settings. Okay, I'm going to zoom in over here and you can see that my hole looks threaded. Okay, this is not these are not actual threads. Okay. This is called a cosmetic thread. If you don't have it, it's okay. Okay. I'll show you how to get it in a moment, but this is basically like a sticker on the inside of the hole that makes it look like it's threaded. Okay. It's a faster way of communicating threads. So if you want to see, um, threaded holes, Basically, what you have to do is go up to your options, all right, which is the little gear. And honestly, I always forget where this is. Document properties, maybe. Detailing. So under document properties and under the detailing setting, the top right checkbox, shaded cosmetic threads. Make sure that's turned on and then click OK. All right. Then you should be able to see your shaded and cosmetic threads. Cosmetic means fake, right? So that's what we're looking at there. Okay. That's basically the whole wizard. It's very easy to use, made up of two different tabs, okay? Um, saving this part, actually before we save this part, there was one other detail in here 
uh, about material, okay? And we have an a AISI 1020 steel, okay? It's a very specific steel type uh, for the material. So, there we go. So, the way to add very specific materials to your parts is going to be in the feature management tree. And the way to do this is you see a material here. It says not specified. You're going to right click. And you're going to then left click to choose edit material. Now it may take some time for this to actually pop up. But there is a window pop up that will come up as soon as it's ready. My cursor is thinking. I see the little SolidWorks logo down below. It's got my little hourglass, which means it's thinking. All right. Have a little patience. There's a lot of information in SolidWorks. All right. But what's happening now is it's pulling up all of the physical material attributes. Okay. So here is my little pop-up, and it was a 1020, wasn't it? So here is AISI 1020. Okay, we also have cold rolled steel, not just 1020 steel, but cold rolled steel. If you scroll down, you'll notice that there are also other materials, iron, aluminum alloys, um, cap copper alloys, so you've got brass and copper and other uh, types of bronze and whatnot. Um, titanium alloys, zinc alloys, plastics, you know, other materials, non-metal materials, carbon fibers, silicons, rubbers, woods. Okay, not everything is in here, but they've got a good selection of typically used materials. Okay. And like I said, these are the actual physical properties of these materials. So we're going to pick AIS, AISI 1020 steel. When I left click to select that, it gives me all of the actual physical properties of that steel. I'm going to apply and close. When I apply, hopefully you notice that your part has changed. Okay, it now takes on sort of a simulated sheen and simulated um, look of that particular material okay if we were to choose like a bronze or something it would take on a yellowish or goldish look all right so with this um, we can actually go into the evaluate tab this is something extra all right but i can go into the evaluate tab and go into mass properties and now that I have a material uh, about this, I can actually calculate the density and the mass and the volume of the product. Okay. So we've got 0.29 pounds per cubic inch. That's the density. The whole thing weighs just uh, about eight and a half pounds based on this being steel. Okay. So kind of a neat to know if you actually get into you know, if you have to know the weights um, of some of your parts, okay, you can actually calculate how heavy your entire part is or your entire assembly is. All right, so I'm going to close this out. And that is this particular part. Okay, if we wanted to go ahead and save it, um, we're going to save this. And I'm going to save this as um, whole wizard sample. I'm no, I know I'm doing what I'm not supposed to with the file name. I'm just going to copy it down. Whole wizard sample. And I'm going to click save. Okay, so I've got my part saved. Next thing to do is to create a drawing out of it. So I go up to the little new icon, hit the little drop down arrow, 
and select make drawing from part or assembly. Hit OK. Choose my B landscape paper. Um, right off the bat, okay, well, I know we haven't done this really, but we have options. We can import annotations. Okay, so if I click on import annotations, um, design annotations, we can try to bring that all of that information in right from the very get-go. All right, so my front view is probably going to be the first view that I bring in. So I'm going to left click and hold, drag it out, let go. And you can see it did bring in some of those uh, annotations. I'm going to move my cursor up. I'm going to left click. It brought in those annotations, including that whole call out, right? I'm going to move to the right, left click, and then pull out a, on the diagonal, left click, and then right click right away without moving my mouse. Okay, if you didn't get that, you can green check. I'm going to move these into place a little bit. Um, now, something that I'm noticing right off the bat is that my dimensions are not really what they should be. So I'm going to go down to my IPS and kind of change to metric and then change back to IPS. And that kind of resets all of my dimensions to inches, which is what it's supposed to be. Um, another way to bring in these dimensions, you can go ahead here and click on model items. And you can basically pick all of these uh, dimension types um, or reference geometry or other annotation objects that you pulled in from sketches and pull them in. Okay, if you remember, uh, okay, if you remember, it kind of throws these into um, its own little version. It's not very clean, but it's an easy way to get most of your dimensions out here. Okay, so um, with this being done, I'm going to do a little bit of um, a little bit of cleanup work. Don't need that. Whoops. Bring that out. Okay, so here we've got a precision of two decimal places. Again, I want that to be three decimal places. So I'm going to go, as long as that's highlighted, just make that three decimal places. Um, and again, we, we are looking at uh, an ISO dimensioning style, right? Which is not really what I want. So I'm going to go up to the gear. Go to Document Properties, and even though my drafting standard says ANSI, I'm just going to switch to ISO, switch back to ANSI, kind of reset it, and hit OK, and that cleans that up. Okay. Now, some of this information um, I still have missing. right? In other words, I can't see the threads. I can't see any of the hidden lines in these two views. So. I'm going to left click on the front view, which is my parent view. And I'm going to go over to this display style settings and change to hidden lines visible. Okay. Once I left click that, then I see all of the appropriate hidden lines. And I can green check to get out of that. Uh, I'm looking at blue origin points, which I don't want to see. So for that, I'm going to go up to the hidden, uh, hidden item and deselect view origins to turn that off. Okay. Now, I have way too much information 
uh, of the same type. So I've got a half inch 20 tapped hole. I have a half inch 20 UNF, half inch 20 UNF. Um, we don't really have a defined depth that's called out on this. All right, so that's something that we're gonna have to fix. Uh, we don't need all of these, right? So I'm probably gonna left click on this one and delete that annotation. I'm gonna left click on this tapped hole version and delete that. And with this final one that I have left, I'm gonna make sure that it's selected and I'm gonna go into the dimension box and before the carrot, I'm gonna place a 2X space. And then after the final carrot, I'm gonna do space and then I'm gonna go down and insert the depth symbol. Okay, hold depth. And I think it was what, 1.15? So I'll manually enter that, and that takes care of the thread callout. Okay. Uh, let's see, what's next? This hole, I'll probably pull in a little bit closer. Um, the six and a half looks good here because it's in between the views. Um, This radius, this radius is a little bit tricky. I think I might do that, but again, I need two of those. So I'm gonna go into my dimension text and before the letter R, I'm gonna do two X space. Before, before the R, because uh, this one, the formula is a little bit different. It has the letter R before the caret and then the dimension, so I gotta put it in front of the R. All right. Uh, for these two inch dimensions, I'm gonna go after the caret and say tip. And we've got our height here, which is good. The other thing that you can do is you can kind of copy dimensions over. Um, I know that that brings redundancy, which is something we don't want. But by holding down the control key and left clicking uh, and holding, I can bring a dimension to another view. Okay, but again, this poses a problem because now I have two dimensions dimensioning the same thing. Okay, um, another way to do this is to use the shift key. Okay, so if I hold down the shift key and then left click and drag a dimension, it actually transports it from one view to another view. Okay, so it's possible to use the shift key to transfer from view to view. All right, maybe I want the five inches using the shift key down here. And that might be a better, better look. Okay. Last thing to do is add my center lines and any kind of center marks. So left click there. Left clicks there. And this looks pretty good. Okay, so that's how you would, I can green check this, complete it, confirm it. Yep. Select on the parent view and change display style. That will give you your hidden views or hidden lines. Uh, 
So you're going to select on the dimension to add the depth symbol. And underneath the dimension text, there's a whole bunch of symbols that you can throw in there as well. So depth symbol is uh, on the bottom row. Make sure that only that dimension is selected. Hit escape a couple of times. Left click once on the dimension. Then you should see it. So you probably deleted the wrong one. Okay. But, but this is our little threaded hole wizard sample.